You might be able to tell that uh, we're getting late in the year. In fact, we're already past our peak for foliage. So leaves are coming down. Things are getting cool. It was 27 degrees this morning. And what's special about today is that I've been looking forward to this for a while because this lake has been known to produce really nice fish. And so we went out here this summer, caught some nice fish, and I said, I'm leaving this alone. I'm leaving this alone until fall, when the biggest fish in the lake are more apt to expose their, themselves and, and are gonna be eating that one last couple big meals before it gets too cold. So fall is a really good time to catch some of the biggest fish of the year. The Minnesota state record largemouth bass was caught in October on a buzzbait. Um, I don't think I'm going to fish a buzzbait today, but what I am going to do is fish a ton of stuff. And I'm making it a little hard on myself because typically I am one to go simple and bring like two rods in the kayak. I'm going to see what it's like to kind of have like a casting deck here. So I'm going to put a bunch of rods up front and see how much I hate it or see if it's not a burden at all. But the reason I mention that is because I've been thinking about this lake for so long that I want to try a variety of things on them. Um, and so I'll go through those baits as I catch fish on them or if anything unique comes up. So I'm not going to guarantee that I catch a giant bass, but cross your fingers and if I do, you'll be along for the ride. big jig bucket. Fall, of course, is a great time of year to throw a jig. Look at that. Terminator Pro's jig and ooh, turbo cross trailer. Oh, man. Just kind of flipping into the ends of uh, these weed patches that I made waypoints on. All right, let me get this one back. So what I mean by making waypoints, I came through here this summer, like I said, custom mapped this lake, but also put waypoints on all the weed patches because there isn't very many. So I wanted to come here in the fall when they weren't evident and uh, be able to fish them, or at least the remnants of them, and that fish was sitting in one. That was a beauty, beauty starter fish. Whew. So I'm sure you guys have heard of the Ned Rig. This here is a Ned Rig. <laughs> Biggest Ned Rig I could find basically. And I'm kind of using it as a throwback bait. So I got bit a couple times on the jig. I caught that nice one. Um, but now I'm kind of starting to get bit a little bit and they're being a little uh, picky. So I'm gonna use this one as just like a subtle little, well, big Ned Rig. And it's not very weedless, but I'm fishing right out on the edges and I have an extremely sensitive rod in this uh, arc reinforcer. It is just like lightning when something bites this thing. Oh, there's a bite right there. Got him. Oh, I missed him. See that? Bit right there. That's what's so cool about the kayak. There, on the fault. On the fault. There we go. <laughs> that's what I was saying that's what's so cool about the kayak is these fish are like right below me come here come here come here come here 
Oh, I want to show everyone. I want to show everybody. I'm talking to you like my puppy. I just got a puppy. Look at that. I was just talking about that. Just gulp. Good little throwback bait. Uh, and like I said, it's not very little, but the point I'm trying to make about the kayak is I'm right on top of these fish. And I have spot lock on, but it's quiet. Cold. Too cold to jump. But there's a stud right there. I do that every time. I don't give myself enough slack. But there's a real chunker on a spinner bait. <laughs> Put a decent hole in it. He's got a bluegill or something down his throat. I don't know if you can see it. It's going. Get her back. Nice. Well, it's now almost 2.30 in the afternoon. Probably the warmest it's gonna be all day. And the water temperature is 55 degrees, which marks kind of a turning point for a lot of lakes and a lot of different species. 55 is when things really start to change and trigger movements for fish. One thing to keep in mind is that you don't wanna to go too fast. And this spinnerbait, just thumps. So you just want to let it hang down there and th 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 thump. My rod tip is just kicking right now. Your cadence should be just a little bit slow. These bigger ones have easier time grabbing it. There's always something to be said about reaction bites, but often in the cooler temps like this in the fall, they kind of really have it a little easier. Oh. Here we go. Come on. Stay button, baby. Stay button. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Be cool. Be cool. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love a spinner bit. Look at that. Oh, I'm, I'm looking ahead of me here and I just got this big line of weeds. So like I said, I'm using it like a wrecking ball, just blasting in the, the weeds and stuff like that. And look at this chunker. Oh boy, Those, that is a giant, that is a big Northern Minnesota bass. here a rough one 21 inches get it back dude spinner bait quite the beef but gosh I love a spinner bait bite this rod may be just too long for the kayak oh there we go spinner bait chunker fall man
Oh, not big. Probably why I missed him the first time. That's what I'm talking about. This is my cast back Ned rig. I just missed one on the jig, so just through the Ned rig giant TRD uh, back in there and mopped it up. My fingers are actually getting kind of cold, so I'm going to glove up. And these are, you know, sun buff gloves, but they definitely cut the wind. I just got to try not to get them too wet, because then they'll be a little colder. But they definitely cut the wind, definitely help, because like I said, it was 27 this morning. Look at you. Not what I've really been used to. I mean, the last fish was smaller or whatever, too, but that was a new patch of weeds. I hadn't fished yet, so. And I can see there's, whoop. can see there's bluegills in there. But you always want to take your time and fish these patches slow, because a tiny patch like this could have 20 plus bass in it. So you don't want to burn through it. So what I'm doing now, we've got a little bit of wind. It's coming from the opposite direction, which is nice because my plan was to turn around and fish the inside weed line of these weeds. So I came by and I fished the outside weed line and picked off a couple fish. And even though these weed patches are small, I'm going to fish the inside weed line now coming this way and see if I can milk a couple more fish out of them because I missed some fish and it's pretty probable that you're not going to get your bait in front of every fish on these weed lines. So I'm going to turn around and fish it thoroughly again um, with my little smorgasbord of baits here. As you can see, the front deck the front deck is full of, of casting rods, and it doesn't bother me at all. It's perfect. I can just reach down, plunk, plunk, cast, cast. It's working pretty good. So hopefully we'll catch a couple more of those big ones, big October beauties. One thing that's really handy is I have my electronics tilted up at me. I'm standing a lot and I'm using these waypoints as references because when the wind blows, I can't see the tops of these weeds. There's still a little bit of emergent vegetation sticking up, but when the wind picks up, I kind of lose sight of them. So it's nice to have these waypoints as reference. So I'm kind of just looking to see where my vessel is in comparison to the waypoints that I made on the map here. And all it takes is just a quick glance down and that way I'm not really fishing dead water. I'm always kind of pointed in the right direction. I'm always making casts where they need to be. Oh, geez. A lot of energy for it being only 55 degree water temps. Another nice one. Little guy, but a little hit spot lock. So that's the deal, man. In the fall, those weeds start to get real brittle. I mean, you can fish a spinner bait any time of year in the weeds, but when you can really start knocking into those brittle weeds and creating a disturbance even more than the flash and vibration that a spinner bait has, it'll get you some big bites like we have today. Like I said, we fished this lake this summer and caught some really nice fish and I told myself I was going to wait because if I wanted to catch the biggest fish in the lake or have a better average, 
then I would save it for October <clears throat> when the weeds are starting to die and the fish are putting on the feed bag and water temperatures are cooling and those pig fish want to chow. So it was kind of fun to be patient and be have all the tools kind of set in place. I'd come out here, put waypoints in all the weeds. I already talked about that. Came back and fished those patches of weeds and there was fish on them and it all kind of came together. Caught a 21 inch large mouth. But yeah, we tried a bunch of baits, covered some water, uh, caught some fish on horizontal baits like a spinner bait, and um, caught some fish just kind of plunking those last patches of weeds with the jig or the giant Ned rig. Get out in the fall, go rip some of those dying weeds, catch some of the biggest bass you'll catch all year.